St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Celestine Butler from Ottawa, Ontario. This Mass is offered for her family and friends, living and deceased. On behalf of all who are gathered for this sacred celebration, thank you for choosing to remember the members of your family and friends with this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's the Feast of St. Bridget of Sweden, she lived from 1303 to 1373, born in Sweden, married at the age of 13. She had eight children, one of whom was St. Catherine of Sweden. Throughout most of her life, she had visions and dreams and the gifts of prophecy and healing. She was widowed in her early 40s. After this, she lived a very penitential life. She founded the Brigitine Order in the year 1370 Originally, the members were both men and women. Now it's just a women's community. She died at the age of 70 while returning from a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. She's a patroness of Sweden and a co-patroness of Europe. As we begin the Mass, let us ask forgiveness for our sins and our selfishness, especially for any rash or harsh judgment we've made on others. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, you revealed the secrets of heaven to St. Bridget of Sweden as she meditated on the suffering and death of your son. May your people rejoice in the revelation of your glory. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son and our brother, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went down from the top of Mount Sinai and came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 pillars corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as communion offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, see the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. to God a sacrifice of praise.
mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The hands declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Amen. to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. and submit to the word planted in you. It can save your souls. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the people another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise that words of the Holy Gospel. May our sins be blotted out. A teacher opened his Bible. He turned to the Sermon on the Mount in St. Matthew's Gospel and read these words of Jesus to his high school class. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. The teacher closed the Bible, sat on the edge of his desk and said, wouldn't it be great if we could weed out the church? Wouldn't it be great if we could remove from it all half-hearted Christians? Think of the impact the church would have on the world if it had only committed people in it. 
A million committed Christians would be a far better witness to Jesus than 25 million half-hearted Christians. The students began to see his point and started nodding in agreement. But a girl in the back of the room raised her hand and said, I agree with what you say, but who would decide who is to be weeded out and who is to stay? A number of hands went up and one boy spoke out, I think almost anybody could decide that. I can give you a list of names right now. Perhaps we would answer much the same as that young man. But this raises a question. Would it be good to weed out the church from time to time? Further questions to consider. Would this periodic weeding help everyone, even half-hearted Christians? Would it shake people up and make them more committed? Would it help the church become what Jesus called it to be, the salt of the earth and the light of the world? Today's parable of the weeds and the wheat may shed some light on these questions. Let's take a closer look at that parable. The weed referred to by Jesus was a curse to Palestinian farmers. Ancient writers referred to it as fool's wheat because in the early stages of its growth, it looked very much like real wheat. This was one of the reasons why the owner told his workers to wait until harvest time. They might pull up some real wheat thinking it was fool's wheat. It is right here that the parable sheds light on the question about weeding out half-hearted Christians from the church. Just as the workers might mistake real wheat for the weed uh, fool's wheat, so we might mistake committed Christians for half-hearted Christians. Even more tragically, we might condemn someone who seems to be a half-hearted Christian, but who might otherwise fulfill the potential to become a committed Christian. The point is this, judgment is not ours to pass. Judgment should be passed only at the end of a person's life by God, not during that life by other people. That is such an important point, I'd like to repeat it. Judgment should be passed only at the end of a person's life by God, not during that life by other people. St. Paul stresses this point in 1 Corinthians. He writes, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts. Here is an example of the risk of passing judgment on someone before the right time. Years ago, a magazine carried a moving story. The report told of a retired lay missionary couple who were living on a farm a little ways outside of town. The couple worked hard growing vegetables and chickens. They ate their own vegetables and eggs and sold the surplus to the townspeople. After a while, the townspeople began gossiping about how miserly the retired missionaries were. One townsman said, they weigh every vegetable and they count every egg twice. They wouldn't give you an extra potato or an extra egg to save themselves. I wonder what kind of missionaries they were. Eventually, the missionary wife died. Only then did the real truth come out. Almost every penny the couple earned from selling their vegetables and eggs went to two elderly widows who depended on them as their sole support. We probably all come across some such misjudging in our experiences. You may have suffered greatly because people have read into things and judged you harshly and or rashly. Perhaps you've done that to others. We certainly have a tendency to do so. Thomas Akempis lived in the 14th and 15th century. He was a German spiritual writer who wrote, how seldom we weigh our neighbor in the same balance with ourselves. And of course, Jesus in the scriptures talked about how we notice a speck in someone else's eye, yet miss a plank in our own. Now, to get back to the point St. Paul makes in 1 Corinthians. 
It's the same point Jesus makes in the parable about the wheat and the weeds. Do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness. So we have to be content to live in a world and a church where saints and sinners live side by side. A church full of saints might be a nice church, but it wouldn't be Christ's church. One religious man wrote, the church is not a gallery for the exhibition of eminent Christians, but a school for the education of imperfect ones. We are, each of us, a mixture of saint and sinner. Let's close with a prayer. Lord, help us realize that the church is not a showcase for saints, but a shelter for sinners. Prevent us from passing judgment on anyone, especially members of our own family and members of our own church. Help us take to heart Jesus' words when he says, stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. The measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. And now let us raise our petitions to God our Father, that we will leave judgment to God and avoid it ourselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we will humbly acknowledge our weaknesses in living the Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord it will be faithful in living out our baptismal covenant. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in any way under the patronage of St. Bridget of Sweden, let us pray to the Lord. For peace and justice throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering, especially those suffering from things like natural disasters, accidents and terrorism, war and threats of war, injustice and oppression, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the injured and all who minister to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for all those who died, especially those for whom we're particularly offering this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our oh God, our Father, take to yourself all these intentions we've mentioned and all the other ones within our hearts. Please consider them all and respond in your own way, in your own time. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself by sharing in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless you. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sins. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, receive the gifts your people bring to you in honor of St. Bridget of Sweden. By the Eucharist we celebrate, may we progress toward salvation. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In him you have renewed all things, and you have given us all a share in his riches. Though his nature was divine, he stripped himself of glory 
and by shedding his blood on the cross, he brought his peace to the world. Therefore, he was exalted above all creation and became the source of eternal life to all who serve him. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying you destroyed a death, rising you restored a life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, with St. Bridget of Sweden, St. Basil the Great, St. Michael, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church 
and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace and unity. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer by St. Claude La Colombière. Jesus, I feel within me a great desire to please you, but at the same time, I feel totally incapable of doing this without your special light and help, which I can expect only from you. Accomplish your will within me, even in spite of me. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we receive your gifts at this celebration in honor of St. Bridget of Sweden. May they free us from sin and strengthen us by your grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to love and serve the Lord and all his family. Thanks to Celestine Butler from Ottawa, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend. We'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Stop.